important thing to understand about the way the brain works is that it is, uh, it's what I call a team of rivals, which means you have many different networks in the brain that are all trying to drive towards their own thing. And you can argue with yourself, you can cuss at yourself, you can contract with yourself and so on. So this is the way that all decisions actually get made. And this is something that neuroscience has been able to make clear over the last 20 years is that um, is that you have these different competing networks in the brain. The interesting thing when you meet with a drug addict and talk with them is that part of their brain really wants the drug, part of their brain doesn't want it. They know all the reasons that they shouldn't do the drug, economically, socially, in terms of employment opportunities, other opportunities in their life. They are very aware of all the costs that this has had to them. The idea um, with the prefrontal workout is the following. Uh, this part called the prefrontal lobe, which is the part behind your forehead, that's the, that's the part of the brain that's very good at simulating the future and saying, okay, here are the reasons that I shouldn't do the drugs. Um, you have other parts of your brain that want the drug right now. So um, the idea that we started working on is taking people who are addicted to drugs, putting them in the scanner, and we, um, we image the networks in their brain that are involved in both of those. So we, we show them pictures of cocaine, for example, and we say, all right, go ahead and crave the cocaine. That lights up particular networks in the brain. Then we say, okay, think about all the reasons why you don't want to do the cocaine, all the costs that this has had to you. And we encourage people to think in that way, and that lights up these networks in the brain. Then what we do, now that we have the, the networks for that individual's brain is we show them pictures of cocaine and we ask them to figure out how to control their craving. So we put on the screen a speedometer that goes from crave to suppress and what they're doing is they try to figure out what they need to do in order to move that needle. In other words, the needle, we're, we're measuring the activity in these networks and that's what determines where the needle is. And they're trying to figure out how to move that needle. So what they're getting is immediate feedback about what's happening in their brain, which is very new and unique. I mean, to be able to measure what's going on inside the brain and give someone visual feedback about that decision making. changing anything fundamentally about the person, we're simply allowing them to figure out how to make better long-term decision making. You know, 60 years ago, there was a movement uh, to have prefrontal lobotomies, uh, as it's called, where, <clears throat> where a surgeon would go in and essentially scramble up the prefrontal lobes. Um, and this was actually a treatment that was done on some people in prison. Um, and the idea is that it would make them less aggressive and so on. And that has, I think, real problems from a libertarian point of view about whether we should ever give the government permission to mess with somebody's brain. The nice part about what we're talking about now with the prefrontal workout is that it only works if somebody wants to change themselves. As I said, with all drug addicts, if you talk to them, they have both of these voices telling them what they should do. And when they're in a moment of reflection about their lives, they really don't want to do the drugs. It's just that when somebody offers them the drug, they, yeah, they just can't resist, it's right there. And so all we're doing is giving people the tools they need to learn what they need to do to be able to resist. So the idea with moving the needle is that you're, you're surfing through your mental space and you're figuring out what it takes to allow the long term to win, whether or not you're even consciously aware of how you're doing it. The interesting part is that people can learn. The interesting part is that they are the ones reshaping their brain. They are figuring out, only if it's meaningful to them, how to do that. Here are the tools that you need if you wanna learn how to do this, if you wanna learn how to do this exercise. 
So from a libertarian point of view, I think this is a very important distinction um, that uh, we're simply giving them the tools to, to decide their own direction, their own fate. I think the ethical issues are minimal with something like this. As long as the system offers that in a way that is, um, you know, even and says, <clears throat> look, instead of going to jail, here's this other opportunity, then the nice part is it's cheaper for the government. I mean, it's less expensive. If, so F, um, functional magnetic resonance imaging is about $500 an hour, which is expensive, okay. but that's nothing compared to jail. I mean, jail is really expensive. I think there's definitely a future. The current brain imaging technologies that we use, it's called functional magnetic resonance imaging, and it's the best thing that we have right now in 2018, but it won't be the best thing in five years or 10 years. And this will become a pretty standard thing to be able to help people, obviously not just in the criminal system with drugs, but even things like obesity or whatever. And so it's always this battle between the long and short-term decision-making.